last lesson we have shown you how critical the state of the Catholic Church is and you might find it strange why I have been trying to dwell with the sickness of the Catholic Church we have shown you some documents from the popes from Vatican office on the state of the Catholic Church and they use such word as gravely ill or as the Holy Office says the church is in crisis and one author even says describing the present church that it was hemorrhaging now those are very strong words and I'm trying to try to impress this in your minds that the church is very sick because you are the church if the Catholic Church is in crisis, you are in crisis. If it is gravely ill, it is you that is gravely ill. Isn't it if you are physically sick, you would like to find out the extent of your sickness so you can take in the fullness of the medication? If you are so concerned with your body, won't you be concerned with your soul that you would like to find out the extent of the illness of your soul so you can take the fullness of the medicine the medicine to all the illness of the catholic church or the illness of priests and the illness of parents and christian family is the same the illness is because they have not obeyed the commands of Christ and what's the medicine obedience to the commands of Christ in the last two vignettes we mentioned the fact that it is easy to analyze the illness of the Catholic Church because it has been the same illness since time immemorial since the year 100 and the solution in which she rose back to her glory has always been the same obedience to the commands of Christ if you feel as most of you do feel that the Catholic Church is really not that sick you will not obey the commands of Christ you might obey one two or three but definitely you will not obey all just as one person with pneumonia might only take an aspirin for the fever when in fact they are seriously sick this therefore is the reason why we want you to fully realize the extent of the fullness of the illness of the church also in the past three or four lessons we have shown you some of these commands of Christ and we mentioned to you the important fact that just as you don't have to read all the fathers of the church reading one is even more than enough so with the commands of christ it's the same you don't have really to obey all of them because like we said they are so integrated with another that if you obey one perfectly just one perfectly you have obeyed 
all the commands of Christ. We saw how Teresa of Avila obeyed only one command, which is withdrawal from the world, because she knew the command, friendship with the world is enmity with Christ. We saw how St. Francis of Assisi obeyed only one command, to leave all things, and he left all things, even what he was wearing. And the point is, he obeyed that command perfectly, and he became holy. You have Stanislaw Koska, who obeyed the command of Christ to leave father, mother, brother, sister, and lands. So you see, these are just some commands, but we have not explained to you yet how to do them. We have just enumerated them. Now, a brief point about the golden thread. Because the golden thread is God's direct intervention in the world, in the history of man, it is God who chooses the persons whom he wants to be his instrument in maintaining the existence of the Catholic Church. So it can happen like this. For instance, he chooses St. Francis of Assisi, but the moment St. Francis dies, he transfers. He leaves the Franciscan and goes to, for instance, St. Catherine of Siena. Then the moment St. Catherine dies, he goes and looks for another one in, for instance, St. Thomas of Aquinas. When Aquinas dies, he abandons the Dominicans and goes towards the Jesuits. It's like that. It is not that he chose St. Francis and then he used the whole Franciscan order from that time up to now. It's not like that. He keeps on transferring, which is a very important point. It is the point that, you know, when God chooses someone, and this someone becomes a saint, and then he dies, it doesn't mean necessarily that the group or the community that he founded is still God's instrument. And true enough, for instance, in the case of St. Francis, the moment he and the core group died, then the whole order began to be Relax. The same thing with the Jesuit order. The same thing with the orders founded by holy founders. So you can see, when God chooses a founder, someone he will use in the golden thread, he chooses one who will not deviate from his commandments. So he chooses St. Francis of Assisi. He teaches him all his commands, and he makes sure, that's why he was chosen by God, he makes sure that St. Francis does not add or subtract from his commandments. Luckily, the small group that surrounded St. Francis were also chosen by God to be part of the golden thread, and so the core group did not add nor subtract from the commandments of Christ, and all their lives kept all the commandments of Christ. But the rest of the Franciscans were not chosen by God to be part of the golden thread. And that's what happens always when a holy man starts a community. When they go out, meaning to say they die, usually the rest are not chosen by God to be part of the golden thread and so they begin to relax the commandments of Christ. They begin to take away this one and that one. Before you know it, only half of the commands are left or nothing at all are left. And that's the reason why God transfers to someone else. He chooses someone else whom he will teach all his commandments and he is assured will keep all his commandments. But then the ones following might not have been part of the golden thread in God's plan. And so when these holy founders die, the next one would subtract again from the commandments of Christ, add here, take away this, 
take away that. And so God finds that he has to transfer to another. And so in the history of the Catholic Church, you will notice that the forces that God has chosen to intervene in the church sorts of zigzags. Sometimes it goes to a bishop like Bishop Charles Borromeo, who did a wonderful job. Sometimes it goes to a priest like St. Alphonse Liguri. Sometimes it goes to a layman like Catherine of Siena. Sometimes it goes to a whole group like the observance of the Franciscans. So you see, that golden thread really is quite difficult to find. You can only find it if you are truly seeking. The funny thing with the formula of the Catholic Church, which is the Catholic faith, is this. Even if you reason correctly, even if you know the concept of one God, the true Christ, even if you know all the commandments of Christ, you can still disobey the commandments of Christ, in which case you end up without faith and therefore a Catholic without a Catholic faith. We have shown you the three obstacles towards right thinking and this one obstacle at the end, which we shall explain later because it's quite extensive, is hard-headedness. In short, what had always been wrong with the Catholic Church? They threw away humility and put on pride. What is the medicine? Throw away pride and bring back humility. May the divine assistance always be with you.